Alléluia. Be seated. God bless you. Be seated. Alléluia. Whether the devil likes it or not, you must prosper. Did you say that amen from your heart? Whether the devil likes it or not, you must prosper. Praise the Lord. You know, there are some people that the kind of cause that is worrying them. We received a text yesterday. We saw another one again today. Whoever gave those people our, their numbers to us, we don't know. We sent SMS to them, informing them of the prosperity week, like everybody else had. Somebody said, stop inviting me to your demonic problem programs. We are eagles. We eat fresh food. That means the person is a believer of this message too. And I said that that uh, should, should stay in the world and preach salvation. So I had to call the number back. I said from brother, I said, say, yeah, hello brother. I said, uh, you just call me brother. Oh. And you say I'm demonic. So you have a demonic brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I asked him, I said, you don't believe in prosperity? He said, no. That we should stay and preach uh, life, eternal life. I said, do you believe in the cross of Calvary? He said, yes. I said, do you believe healing flow from there? He said, yes. Salvation, eternal life flow from the cross. He said, yes. I said, you don't believe that prosperity also flow from there? I said, well, we, we believe in the total gospel. How many of you believe in the total gospel? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Christians must prosper. That doctrine that we make a believer to stay in poverty, but live in holiness, is Satan trying to deny you of a benefit. Don't accept it. Hallelujah. Please just tell them to set this thing well. You can hear it is not sounding well. Amen. Praise God. Okay. We have been waiting for today. Mr. Deniro is around. Mr. Fish. I don't want to introduce him. I don't want to introduce him. Um, sorry, the way we put this thing, we will have put it behind here. Because those people there are not going to see if it's not, you can be watching the screen, but I think Sometimes you want to look away from the screen too and see who they talk. Don't put it behind him, right behind him here. Okay. I don't want to introduce him. I want him to introduce himself by himself. Eh? You know, there is biography and there, there is biography of and there is autobiography. Uh, for better production, please. Amen. And those of you watching us all over the world, wherever you are watching us from, as usual, can we tell them shalom? shalom. Wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. Those of you, wherever you are, wherever you are watching us, from whichever country you are watching us now in our live broadcast, 
What do we say again? Shalom. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Shalom. Shalom. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, all your neighbors around you. Shalom, 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 shalom. Praise the Lord. Now, now, this is the kind of seminar that uh, people pay thousands of naira to be able to attend the seminar. Thousands of naira. Five, five thousand of you. How much do they pay? Mr. Fish. Five, five thousand. Okay, the organization. General, uh, what happened? Our microphone is not sounding. Okay. I said if it's a, a group program, it's always 10,000 naira. But it's individual, it's 30 to 50,000. That is what you are great, getting for free. That is what you are getting for free here today. Praise God. Are we not blessed? Can we clap our hands for our God again? I want them to change the power. Is somebody here? What you will hear here today is all that will grant you your economic empowerment. We take another look from today. Yeah. Amen. Your destiny from today. Praise the Lord. Can we, can we help them so that we can share this faster than this? Can, can, coordinate us. can you help? Can we help us? Help us please. I don't, I, I want you to be attentive, that's why. Finish sharing it quickly before I hand over the microphone to him. So that you'll be listening, not uh, struggling to collect pamphlets. Bring it back. Hey, bring it back. Hallelujah. When it is over, I don't know why the Holy Ghost wants us to do that water ministration again today. Hallelujah. When the seminar is over, we will round it up with that water ministration. So everybody come in. I hope you have two sachets of water. If you never get your go and get it to two sachets of water. Let's quickly, let's share that quickly. Hallelujah. Stanley, can you sing, do not doubt, do not doubt. As they sit down to listen, don't doubt what you are hearing. You are not here today by accident. What you are told has never failed out so of do not doubt. Do not doubt, do not doubt. What you are told in the lie. For the Lord who has called you has never failed out. Do not doubt, do not doubt, do not doubt. What you are told in the lie. For the Lord who has called you has never failed out. In the beginning 
Distractions. Let's take our seats. Please, let's try to be as orderly as anything. To get this man here, how to go with prayers. Please, don't let my prayer be in vain. Make sure somebody grabs something. Because we don't know when we will get him again. He travels all over the places. His target is the Christian community. To empower us. It's going to tell you some secrets that will help somebody. Just change your thinking a little while. This is our prosperity week. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, if we are ready, can we just use our hand and glorify the name of the Lord as I hand over to our brother. Praise the Lord. Can we rise up on our feet and give glory to the person who has made this possible? With a song. Choir, do you know it? All the glory must be to the Lord. To the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. Of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. Two more times. All the glory must be.
Father, we thank you for the wisdom that you have made available today. Thank you for the strength that comes from the knowledge. Thank you for the courage that you will give us to become testimonials and take our portion to be a part of this great commission, changing the world for a better place so that your name can be glorified exceedingly above all names on this planet. Take all glory, Jesus, today. In the name of Jesus. Let's have a seat. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's Now we have, uh, my name is uh, Israel Adedino. Now people call Israel Adedino. Now I changed my name from Idris to Israel. That was of years back, 1991. Why? Because I know by the grace of God, each Christian is sent to change a generation of people. And I feel more comfortable with that name. Now, but people have christened me with another name. That name is almost more popular than Israel now. And that's Mr. Fish. Now, the name came about because I proposed to do one thing. You know, when you give your life to Christ and you come into Christ, you are like a newborn baby, a little bit empty. So needing to be you, you use double microphone. Okay. Okay. Needing to be filled with the things that will make you become a man in the kingdom. Now, I set out to do something quickly. What is my vision for being a Christian? And I found that the greatest vision is to be a part of the Great Commission so that the gospel is preached to all the hands of the heart so that the end can come quickly. Is that not? So we can all go and enjoy it there. So I said, I won't be a pastor, but I will be an apostle of food, providing funds, empowering Christians to be able to make funds available to power the kingdom of God. So I said to myself, we will pro Thank you for that. These are all written down. If you go to my site, I'll mention it to you later. In about a week's time, you'll see all of them there. Written 1993. Now, when I was living in a one-room apartment. Now, the mission was a vision. The vision is to progressively generate a billion naira, you know, to be endowed to the kingdom of God by 2015. Somebody will ask me now, we're in the year 2012. How much have you made available so far? <laughs> now, I can tell you something. By the grace of God, me and my sons, we have exceeded that figure to the glory of God. Okay. Now, how? Personally, I might be about one-tenth of that figure. But most of the sons God has used us to raise are putting funds back into the kingdom. I'll give an example about two weeks ago, about three weeks ago. A young man who used to be a, a tout, maybe that's the word to use, pardon me to use that word, tout. You know, when you want to collect your driver's license, PWD, you know, there are some people who run after you. Oga, Oga, are they available? Can I help you with your driver's license? Can I help you with your vehicle particulars, roadworthiness. Now, one of them was privileged to attend my program years back. It was the one we saw two weeks ago. You know what he told me? He said he wanted to buy something that would help him to facilitate the execution of a fish order to the tune. And what's the order? Somebody asked him for about a million pieces of catfish fingerlings. He wants to give it to the person at nine naira each. And how did he know fingerlings? He didn't go to a fishery school. He was trained, paying, I don't know, maybe 5,000 naira or 2,000 naira at that time to produce. Now, how much is he going to make? That's about nine million naira. I asked him, I said, how much are you going to spend? He said he knows he's not going to spend up to 
300 to 400,000. Can you give Jesus a clap offering for that? But do you know, as many that wish to be empowered like that, in the next one hour, I will expose one of the greatest secrets in the world of fish, in the world of fish farming to you. Nobody likes to do that. It is the grace of God that will make me to do that. And do you know why? Because Jesus said, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the thing he has prepared for us. But then it's not enough to quote that. There are some conditions to make you to get to that level. That what will happen with you will never have happened to anybody on this planet. It's going to happen on the platform of love of God, isn't it? I remember Jesus was asking Peter, do you love me? Peter said, are you asking me that, master? You know we love you now. Jesus asked again, do you really, really love me? Abba, master, are you asking me that? What did he say? He said, feed my lamb. Now, who are the lamb? The brethren. Feed them with the requisite information that will empower them and their generations to come. And in that way, all of us can make an impact on the world. So, with my knowledge in fisheries, I decided to go ahead and make the same knowledge available to any Christian I come across. Though it's not limited to Christians alone now, I thought you clap for Jesus for that. Now, to understand the, to understand the power behind this teaching I'm going to give you, I will ask some of you to go to Time Magazine. How many of us know that magazine, Time Magazine? Now, Time Magazine is one of those magazines that they sell for 300 or 500 naira, like Newsweek. It's one of the top most magazines read all over the world. They used to do something every year. They will look at people who have influenced everybody in the world. And they look at which one are the 100 top most people who have influenced the world. Pastor the boy of the Redeemed Church was there, I think some years back, three years back. Now, do you know for this year, one of the top 100, who is actually almost number three, is a fish farmer. It's a Côte d'Ivoire young man called Valerie. Can't remember his surname. Now, what does he do, really? Because many of you are going to be greater than that young man that is the third most important people in the world in Jesus' name. Now, to make that happen with each person here, now, when I saw it on CNN, it was called with all the movers and shakers of the world, Nobel Prize winners. Now, what does he do? He was trained in a university in the United States. You'll be trained in this university now, in the next few hours. Now, he did, he's into tilapia farming. You know tilapia fish. You know this, uh -huh. Now, when he was going to do his youth call, let me use that word, he went to Haiti, this country that had earthquake. He found that they are so poor there. So what he did was to decide to, when he produces his fish, now there's something he does to them that will make them reproduce again. He will now give them excess babies of the tilapia. This is catfish, mind you. He will give them excess babies. He takes it to the villages, tell them to stock their fish pond, to stock their dam, their rivers. Are you getting me? When the Clinton Initiative saw him, they said, oh my God, is there somebody doing this kind of thing in the world? They just introduced him to Time Magazine, Top 100, and they invited him to New York for the award. He was shocked. You should know how much dollars went to him to further the cost of the work. When I saw it on television, I was excited, and at the same time, water was dropping from my face. Why? Because I saw in Valerie what they see him as having done that makes him so unique in the world. That this is what we as Christians have made available for the past 15 years. Now, we not just give people fish, we teach them to become Valerie's. So can you imagine if somebody is in the top most important because he's giving them fish for free, how much more you that will be trained now, not only to know how to produce fish, to give to other people, so what will they give me and you in some few years to come? What number? 
Can you see we're the most privileged people on the planet? That is the world system. It's number three in the world. So what number do you think we should have? We that has produced over 50,000 valeries. <laughs> Give Jesus a clap for that. Now, I have about three hours. So we're going to divide it into one hour segment because there are about three things I'll have to tell you. Now, number one is I am going to make you have access to the core secrets that will make you successful in fish farming. Number one. Then number two, I'm going to reveal some secrets to you that will make you to become completely healthy. You'll agree with me that everywhere is contaminated. The air you breathe is contaminated by electromagnetic signals. I will demonstrate it and you'll be shocked. The water you drink is contaminated. How many of us agree with that? So they call it pure water, but we know it's poor water, isn't it? Now the water has been killed with the water pump. The water has been contaminated with all kinds of materials. And if you escape from that, you end up facing white sugar in form of soda. You know, you go up it. I don't want to mention any minerals name now. So water is completely polluted. So where do you get clean water that's exactly like the water in your body? Because each of us is 10 gallons of water. So how do you get the right water to drink? Today, you'll be free to have access to the right water to drink from now and in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number three, all our food are polluted. You know, sir, that when your wife comes from the market, she buys vegetable and all sorts of ingredients, you know. You now decide to cook it. Everybody here knows that when you cook food with fire, once the temperature increases to above 60 degrees centigrade, the vitamins and minerals, they are all gone. Madam, am I speaking sense? But all the same, you still serve the food to your darling and your families. Knowing fully where there is no vitamins nor minerals in the food that you have just cooked. Now, I know I don't blame you. What you are trying to do is that you want to prevent them from being infected with germs. But from germs, you give them junk. Now, would you want to, from today, give them correct natural food even though it's cooked? Can I see your hands up? Jesus will make that information available to you today. Very interesting, isn't it? <laughs> now, for those who are challenged, there are five basic challenges people have around the world now. Number one is high blood pressure, hypertension. You know what I'm talking about, right? I don't want to say anybody should raise hands up. I've been to several places, you'll be afraid when I say raise your hands up. Then number two, and it's caused by, not because of worry or anything, or stress per se, it's caused more by the food we eat. You'll be delivered today from those kind of food in Jesus' name. <laughs> yes. The second one is diabetics. See, small time you see people, I want peace. I want peace here and there, you know. It's funny. Especially men. I wonder. And women should be doing that more. Maybe women hold back more. And what causes that? Because of the excessive sugar people take. Now, do you want to be free from taking sugar without stopping, without stopping the habit? Did you hear what I said? Do you want to be free from taking sugar without stopping the habit of taking sugar? <laughs> because, you know, it's a habit. You go up the thing, you know, 11 cubes of sugar in those things in the bottle. Now, you want to stop it, but you can't stop. But if we change the sugar inside into molars, harmless sugar, will you appreciate that? Yeah. That's going to happen today. <laughs> Two more. Do you have people at home, as everybody grows older, you begin to see people walking slowly? You know, like that, elderly people. It's not because they want to walk with respect. It's because their back, the spines, the joints, arthritis, you know? Arthritis is a habit 
ailments, right? Because of the acid nature of the food we all eat. Now, almost everybody is involved because of the food we take and the water we drink, the acidic environment. That's why if you do like this, now, can somebody do that for me? You know, you, 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 you press your knuckles. Ooh, can you hear the sound? IT people, can, uh, they, can you hear that sound? Pang, 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 you know? Now, that's not good. That means the joints are not oiled properly anymore. That's arthritis in the making. Now, for those who have it already, who are having that challenge, and those who have not, but they are prone to it, will we want to be free from that stuff today? Now, in Nigeria, this one is peculiar to Nigeria. All of us use generators at home. Is that not? All of us... Oh, so I'm limited. <laughs> now, all of us use generators at home. Is that not? And so much traffic jam on the road. Many people use... Can I see your hands up if you use generator at home? Even if it's small pass by neighbor, almost all hands are up. Now, how will you feel... I know you are not comfortable with the amount of money you spend on buying petrol or diesel. Am I right? Now, supposing you're able to save about 20... Oh. So when you're able to save about 20 to 40% on the amount of money you use for diesel and petrol, will you like that today? I didn't hear you very well. Oh my God. I think... That would really be enough for today. <laughs> There's enough within the next few hours. So I'll get down to business right away. Let's clap for Jesus for that. What's going to make us know today? Now, who is talking to you really? I've told you my mission statement, uh, my vision. Now, but my mission statement is to disseminate fish, protein, and technology to the world's hungry people. But then you start from the Christian fold. So I told myself that, look, the step ahead is to disseminate fish. So that's why you see me talking about fish all the time. And that's why you see me talk about technology. And then that has to do with health. So don't blame me. I've been doing this now for the past, uh, since 1996. Uh, Are you getting me? Prompted by my pastor then at Winners Chapel. My, you see my pastor? No, now you see my pastor. Who said, look, people are hungry. Why not give them what they will need to eat? Because I'm an aquarium man. I build aquariums and fountains to beautify the environment. So I decided to go around universities and pick information from different books, put them together, and then came out with something simple that even an average housewife or even an illiterate megad can make happen. The greatest secret in fish farming is how to convert one fish into about five to 10,000 that you can sell for 20 naira in about six weeks. How many women would like to know that? I saw that technique from a woman in Vietnam. We might not know where Vietnam is on the map. Her name is Mrs. Quan Mai. Now, it's an interesting story. I helped one brother with money for hostel at University of Ibadan. He said he wants me to give him money. I, must have, I should have slapped him if not for Christian restraint. Because at that time, my total income per month was 2,000 naira or so, 3,000. Now you said the Holy Spirit said I should give you 600 naira to pay school fees. I wonder, because I talked nice, he didn't know my pocket wasn't near to my speech, you know. But Holy Spirit told me in the evening, give him the money. I can't tell my wife because she will say, what else now? I do it well. For maybe I'll, first of all, Make us recognize that because women are going to like her. She's trained quite a number of women. Well, you know I'm Mr. Fish. So what do you think her name should be? Oh, can you stand up for recognition? <laughs> Darling. <laughs> now, she's going to help. We married for over 16 plus years now. So don't mind, don't, don't mind that we look very young. I'll tell you what makes us to look young. People always mistaken now for a student, <laughs> you know? Even though our children should be in the university next year now, two of them. <laughs> two, two of the four. Now, when the guy collected the money, he's doing geographical information system 
Thank God I did that because the young man now is a United Nations top official now in the same country, Haiti. Thank God I gave him the money. Now, in the course of his searching for information in the library, he came across two sheets of paper on fish farming. He said, oh, this will bless Brother Muiwa. So he kept it until it was on holidays and brought it to me. When I saw it, I was shaking. That's why I saw an article. The article was about that woman who was producing 70 million pieces of the babies of catfish in the balcony of her house, or veranda. Abi, Abi, what's the word for? Pardon me, you know, I'm a Yoruba man, so in case the English doesn't flow. You know, the veranda, you know, or balcony of her house, 70 million pieces. 52 weeks make one year. So that means about 1 million piece, pieces per week. Even this one naira she's selling. So I, I studied it, and inside me I said, I will make every Nigerian woman, a KS Christian woman, to be able to make this happen. And do you know, as of today, it's only in Nigeria that you see a non-governmental body teach ordinary people who did not go to fishery school to produce fish like a professional. Give Jesus a clap for that. <laughs> now, to make you understand the implication, I went to Unilag, University of Lagos, from 19, uh, 1981 to 1987. I didn't repeat class, because I know some guys are calculating now. BSc, MSc, BSc Zoology, specializing in uh, oceanography and uh, fish and uh, marine biology, you know. I used to tell, we're trained to let trawlers know where is the ocean is in the ocean. So that if you want to catch shrimp, you know, you can tell them to go there and put their net down and capture. That's a wicked job. Just catch all the shrimps. Nine people in the shop now to mix your we do and the rest kind of. Now that's what I was trained and I did master's degree. Went for youth co in between, did my master's degree. But you know when we finished, we didn't really know what the benefit of fish farming. Many of my mates went to do medicine. Some went to customs. Some went to banks to work at banks. But you know many of them are coming back to fish farming now. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> now do you know? Okay. You can clap for Jesus for that. Now do you know what happened? When they all ran away, I told myself this is what I'm going to do. We're going to put life into this business. So I started with the aquarium business. And then by the time I gave my life, yield myself to Christ 1991, Holy Spirit started showing me deep things. At that time, you only have 34 countries south of, out of the countries in Africa. You know how much fish you are producing, catfish? 0.1%. As at two years ago, CNN said Nigeria alone is producing 1.6% of the world's catfish. That's almost 3,000 plus percent increase. All because somebody took it up to begin to blow out the information for everybody who cares. Can we clap for Jesus for that? <laughs> now, you know why people don't like fish? I'll quickly tell you. Just motivate you quickly. I will now start our practicals. Because I'm sure that fish will be almost ready now. I'll tell you what I did now. There's a pregnant woman. Woman fish -o you know, <laughs> that will be ready to give birth to babies. We'll fertilize her, and then by tomorrow afternoon, the babies will become almost about five to 10,000 pieces. I don't know I'm going to get, over, get it over to you, for those who are interested. <laughs> so how, but we'll come to that now. Now, why people are not interested is because of the fact that when we're in school, we're told that you can grow catfish. Can somebody come show us catfish? Uh, Austin, does and you hold it up. Now, you can, grow, you can grow two catfish in one square meter space. What is one square meter? That's like the size of this table. One square meter space. You can grow catfish only two in that kind of space. Now, that fish will grow to one-fifth the size of this. It's going to be about, yeah, about half the size of this. This is about uh, 600 grams about one third the size of this, in nine months, nine months old, just two. But you know, as of today, what you are going to be taught today, you will know how to put about 200 of the same kind of fish in this same space. And they will not grow to just 200 grams. They will grow times five the size. Not in nine months, but in about four to five months. 
Did that make any sense? Now, for the Indigos here, maybe let me talk the meaning in Naira. Now, one kilo of fish is sold for 500, 600 Naira. Wholesale. But market women, they sell them 800. Now, if you have just 200 grams, just two, that's 400 grams. That means you are even less than 250, about 250 Naira. Now you go sell them now. But now, that's the worth of that space. Now, you now have about 200 on the same space growing to one kilo that you sell at 600 naira. What is 200 by 600, my brother? 200 times 600, how much is that? From 450, can somebody calculate for me? Quickly. Can somebody calculate for me? 200 times 600. Somebody, somebody come out. This is not pretty. Huh? One point. No, you're two. No, I said 200 naira times 600 naira. That's about 12,000, isn't it? 12,000. You see me? Eh? Quenu. He said 1.2 million. He don't extrapolate quick, quick, you know? But it's 12,000. Now, that's a big difference from 400 naira to... 400 naira to 12,000 naira on the same amount of space. Now, do you know... You want to know what it takes to get to that level? I may want to know, please. Okay, good. I'll be very smart about it to let you know. Now, this is what I've been doing since 1990, 96, 97. So don't worry that the time looks short. But there are books, there are VCDs that you can access. Are you getting me? In the course of the program. Don't panic. You always have access. If you can't get because of the number of people, you can always put your name on a piece of paper and they bring it for you in the church at next service. Is that okay? Because I always reduce price by one tenth when I'm in a Christian circle. Is that okay? Somebody still paid 20,000 naira for the full pack yesterday. But I'm sure, yeah, you're going to buy it for less than maybe 500 naira or whatever. About that less. So will somebody clap for Jesus for that. Now, because you got it very cheap, don't contempt it. I know what I'm doing with God. He that showeth mercy, he himself will have mercy. Is that not? And it's the mercy of God that brings favor. I expect that you will end up do the same thing in some few years to come. Show shall be in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I whetted your appetite. Now, I said Anna went around and we began to simplify information. And we started teaching people 1996, 97. Today, you will see catfish in so many places, isn't it? You'll be wondering, how many snails you see all over the place? You can't. Or any other species of fish. Not at all. Why? Because of the fact that you, nobody is there to open up after the heart of God like God has used us to do. And my intention is to make sure once you are belly full now, you go out and do the same thing. Is that okay? Now, to prove to you that fish is one of the greatest source of prosperity for mankind. Abraham was a farmer, isn't it? Doing cattle rearing. But unfortunately with Abraham, once a cow, to get one kg of meat, a cow will need to eat 20 kilograms of food. That's funny. So his son started doing crop farming. That's arable crop, Isaac. Jacob started preservation. But when Jesus came, Jesus showed us the kind of a Greek we should focus on. And what was it? When he was choosing people, you remember it was fish people he shows now. Peter and Andrew, is that not? When they were looking for money, he didn't say they should go to the mouth of a goat, isn't it? He said, if you go to the mouth of a fish and bring out the cash from there, isn't it? Oh, oh, some, somebody's impressed. He never finished. Oh. When they were doing a service like this, prosperity week or so, in the desert or so, you remember they were hungry in the evening. They got carried away by the preaching. And then they were looking for who has food. Town, they far. What did they do? They said, let's look for a young boy. He said he has some piece of bread and some goat meat, have you? No, it was fish all the same too. And when it was multiplied, like we see some multiplication happen here today, what happened? Everybody was fed and they had how many baskets left? Oh my God. Even at that, for Dickens and Dickenesses, I think Luke 11, when they are finished 
Jesus had finished with them using their boats. He didn't tell them to go and buy tractors and launch into the forest to start cultivating uh, maize now. He said, launch out into the deep and do what? Put your net down for fish. Is that not enough sign for you that you should focus on? You know why? Fish is funny because to produce one kilo of fish, sir, your fish will just need to eat one kilo of food. For poultry, it is six kilos of food that your chicken will eat before it give you one kg of broiler chicken. For pig, it's about eight kilos of food your pig will chop before it gives you one kg of pork. So common sense tells you, what should you focus on? Because food is the greatest, uh, uh, I mean, uh, food is the greatest recurring cost when you are doing farming. So if the food is small or less cost, you know, you make more profit, is that not? And I can tell you, fish is the only one you can put 200 on a square meter space, one leg by one leg. How many pig you feel put there? How many chicken? Maybe about three or four, don't be so. How many cows? So we're in business. So what we do, so what I'm going to do now is to now focus over the past years now, for the past 15 years or so, I've been able to come up with about five business systems for people who are interested in fish farming. So the first one, which is the most secretive, which I don't like to teach people, except Christians per se, though I've taught quite a number of allergies too, mind you, believing that one day, they will call, after all, I was a Muslim too up to university, and God in his mercy drew me to him. I remember I used to make jest of SUs then in the university, not knowing that he don't arrest me already. <laughs> so there's no discrimination here. Now, I forgot to say something. How many of us come from the village environment? You know you are not original from Lagos. I'm a Lagosian, mind you. My granddad built a house in Lagos in 1926. So, so how many of us come from the village? Let me see your hands up. Now, there are rivers in your villages. Am I right? Do you know there are some small, small fishes way they there that they don't even eat them, but you use them. If you don't get at one, you will now use them to bait the other big fish. Do you know there are some people who are exporting those fishes for one dollar, two dollars each? Do you know that? Oh, you open your mouth. And there are about 400 varieties. I told Pastor now, somebody in Cameroon who has a private jet, what he does is to, is to take some fish. Let me see if I have the fish here. I'm sure it's in somebody's, it's in somebody's village. This particular fish, beam it, that one, they call that fish aposemium. They find a plenty in Yenogua. Yenogua has the largest. Now that fish, the oldest in the world, is one year old. Yeah, that fish that you see there. Now one year old, though, you know they pass one year. Do you know why? The fish will die. You know, they are in small, small lakes, all those ponds, where they build for dry season. You know, you know what I'm talking about, some of us. Now, those fish will lay eggs in the, in the ponds, and then they start swimming. But once the pond is dry, all the fishes will die. But they put their eggs there, so that when rain falls next year, the eggs will hatch, and they become babies again. Millions of them are born this year now. If you don't catch them to export for one dollar each, that now you all know. Because there's somebody in Cameroons who sends young Christians to go and he's a white man who sends young Christians to go and capture the thing for him. They're even happy to give him for free. He puts about 1,000 pieces in a box like picnic with oxygen cylinder and then ships them overseas for how much per box? He sells for $1 per fish. 1,000 a box, how much is that? $1,000. 40 boxes per week for three months he works and goes on holiday for, for nine months. How many of us would like to walk like that? You have more time for gospel, isn't it? To now preach easily. Now, these are secrets not told anybody. I'll mention it to you in the course of the program. So let's start with this, with the fingerlings production. Now, there are about five books I have here that will help you. Uh, can you bring me the books? Let's start. Okay? Now, the first one we'll do now is the fingerlings production. Check the female. Is it, is it looking okay? It's okay. Now, fingerlings, can we call it catfish fingerlings production? That's how to produce the baby. Now, you can imagine if we have 
1,000 people in this church master catfish fingerlings production. Then the whole world will be free from hunger now. Is that not? Is that not? Maybe you don't know how serious hunger is. Let me read something for you quickly, and then we will we'll proceed from there. Uh, excuse me. I want to read something for you. Um, I'll bring you. Where's the dark faces of one of the leaflets? No. Nope. Uh, let me check. Hold on for me. Uh, no. All oh, these too much books. There's a. Oh. The, the, okay, let me let me read it from here. I'm sure I have it here. In so many places. Okay, I still have it here. That's it. Okay, that's it there. Oh, my class monitor. Be careful. <laughs> okay, now I want to read something for you from this book. Now, to show you how serious this issue of hunger is, people are really hungry. And you know that. Where in Lagos, where they bring all the food in Nigeria to, and yet people are still hungry. Zero one one, Abi. Zero zero one or thereabout. Now, I read something here. Hunger has been described as a potent human destroyer than war. And the facts are very staggering. More than one billion people, billion, are chronically hungry. Every year, 13 to 18 million people die as a result of hunger and starvation. There are 12 months in a year. So we're talking over one million people die of hunger every month. Now, more people die from hunger in the past years that were killed in the two world wars combined. Now, the number of people who die every two days is more than the one that were killed by the bomb they dropped in Japan. That are killed to 40,000. Now, every 24 hours, let's limit it, 35,000 people die as a result of hunger. 24 people die every minute. That before we finish this program now, over 14,000 people have died of hunger. Is that serious? Now, 18 of whom are children under five years of age. When I saw this, I felt so bad. I saw it in the book written by Lester Somra. It's a, it's a Pentecostal church in the U.S. They wrote a book, That Faces of World Hunger. And God spoke to him when he was in Jerusalem. The man is dead now. He's been with the Lord. God told him, start a Joseph end time feed the hungry program. Go out and feed the hungry. Now, like I told you, I was in a one-room apartment then. I'll tell you what happened then. I was a blessed, blessed person when I was, I never worked with anybody all my life. I've been doing a Korean business with over 30-something staff as back as 1989. But when we married, there was this attack from the other side, you know. And then before I know it, that my lovely wife was in the hospital for over three months. Before we know it, our firstborn too was in the incubator for over two months plus. You should know how much you have in your account. You must finish it now as a man. And you can't go back to your old base to ask them for money. Because they told me I'm going to come back and beg them. So you should understand where I'm coming from. Now, so it's in that one room, even though everything was stripped of me in terms of cash, but this one was not stripped. The intellect. <laughs> so this helped me to know how to have compassion on people. You know, I would have been a dangerous person. Because... Because why? Because I never knew what hunger was. But that incident made me understand where they call Iyanopaja. That's why I sit still till now. I was somebody brought up <laughs> at KJ and the rest. But that's when I began. And I love the place. So let's go ahead. Now, when I saw Lester Somral's uh, details, I told myself I want to be a part of this hunger solution. What the church did was they bought a sheep and told the members to bring food. They will not take it to an African country. They went to Rwanda. They went to Liberia. They went to Ethiopia. Price of food will just drop. But instead of doing that, why can't I or some of us empower people to produce enough fish to load a ship? You can make that happen. By understanding this now, I'm not training a group of young people to make that happen in African countries, sir. Isn't it? I feel that is more potent than even telling them, bring a sandin, bring this one and all that stuff. Do you agree with me? And that's why I made up my mind, 1996, no, 1997 January, the man went to be with the Lord some months later. I have never seen him face to face. I've never been to America before. I've never been to America. But yet, the same spirit God infused into him is infused into me, and that's why I'm infused to so many Christians because 
is a hugely godly, godly affair, highly Pentecostal in nature. It's part of the Great Commission ministry. Let's clap for Jesus for that. So, so how do you produce catfish fingerlings? Everybody keeps it a secret because that's a solution to know how to produce fish. Now, how do you produce it? The first thing is to know how to know a male and a female fish because the fish in the river will produce baby when it's just rainy season. Listen, oh, the fish will wait until there is water from rain that will cause a flood. The water will become brown so that the whole place will be dark. You know, it's a, it's a black fish. Then you know the water will go over grass. Some grass will die. Those ones that die, they will produce what they call infusoria. Those are the small, small food that the baby of the fish will eat in about five days' time. Are you listening? Because what is happening in the river in your village is what you want to make happen in your own room. Now, those grass that have died, mind you, those ones, they will be the ones to be the food. When they decay, they produce what they call paramecium and uh, you know, I'm a banner. All these people will do biology. But for the sake of local market women here, yeah, it will produce more small food. Now, some grass are stubborn. They will still stay, stand, can't play like that. Those ones are where the, the fish will go and put our eggs. Are you getting me? So as the water is passing by, fast, 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 it will blow. You know, the water is blowing. That's the incubator for the eggs. So in about... 24 hours or 12 to 24 hours, the eggs will ash in the river. But unfortunately for the catfish, the baby will be about 10,000, 15, 20,000. But after three, four, five days, man, from the 20,000, the thing will remain just about 200. In one week, the thing will remain just about 10. You know why? Frogs, toads, birds, other fishes, water self will even wash some off. And that's why fish is still expensive. Even though Jesus had made provisions to make fish to be the best protein for all of us, to be cheaply available. So what do we do? So some white people have discovered the method, so I just copied them and innovated. So they have done something to create that environment to deceive the fish. When the rain is falling, you know what the first thing they find out? They find out that there's something inside the brain of the fish. They call it pituitary. Can we call it? It's more like a pinhead. It's the same thing that makes a boy to become a man. It's the one that makes a girl to become a woman. Once your pituitary begins to get sensitive, you begin to grow bia bia, you know, mustache and all of that stuff. You begin to look mirror extra, begin to notice girls, you know. And for women too, you know, use pancake. You want to make your hair, you know, that kind of thing. That. Now for catfish, once rain begins to fall, that thing will become double. So once that thing becomes double in the head, the pregnancy will become big, the stomach will become big. And then a male fish will just know, ah, this lady is fine. Oh. Then he will now go and begin to come, 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 you come. Now he now begin to he now begin to make pass at the female fish, he just begin to knock her tummy, bang, bang, like that. Ah, you, back? you know, like that. Now when he does that, he's helping her to remove the egg. At the same time, he's releasing the milk like the sperm cells, on the eggs. So the eggs will just flow and make the grass. In about 12 hours, the whole thing will hash. But the problem is, who will save the eggs now? And sit down. <laughs> now, so that's what we're going to do. So the first is to know male and female fish. Don't bother that I'll be short here. There's a CD. I'm sure, I'm sure it's not up to a thousand naira. It's less. They say we can only announce price because if you give it to me, I'll just say free. But, you know, you get at less than one-tenth of the price. Now, there's a CD that even if you cannot read and write, you can actually do it when you see it happen. Is that okay? Is that okay? Now, so, what's happening is this. Instead of killing that fish, another fish now, to remove the head, and killing a male, we only kill the male to remove the testes, because testes is inside the fish. But for the stuff, one man in Canada... Mr. Sindel made something they call overprim. Can I have overprim here? Can we call it overprim? Now, this thing, what it does is to be like that stuff. Don't use it for human being. Oh. <laughs> Are you getting me? So, once you take the injection, uh, you take a little out of the liquid and you put it inside a fish. Are you getting me? You put just where the needle, 
you put just a where's the syringe? It's in the bag. Do we have it here? Okay, yeah. It's here. Thank you. Now you have the syringe. Let's have the male and female fish. Oh, no, the male. You know, the female is ready. You have your bowl ready. Did you bring the bowl? No, male now, male, male. Is that the male? Bring it. Now, you beam it for them to see. Now, you put that, that stuff I showed you now, the overprim. I need somebody to. Okay, where's the overprim? Somebody to hold the mic for me. Okay? Uh, now, you saw what I brought out earlier, the overprim. Now, you now put it inside this injection. Two mil injection. Is that okay? Thank you. You put in a two mil injection, right? You draw it like a nurse. <laughs> That's interesting. If you like, go wear white something, coats, you know, so that you will look, say, you go Japan, go land the thing. So that your neighbor will not think, say, na inside church. So you just draw. Now, you use weighing scale that you use for fish at home now to measure fish, to measure gary or something. You measure it. If the fish is uh, half of a kilo, 500 grams, you just measure uh, two lines, about two and a half lines. You measure it and you now inject the fish on the right side of the fin. Look at it on the, on the right side here, right? You let it go in, almost the whole needle. Then you now press it out. You press the hormone out into the fish. Is that okay? Now you, you press about half out. You put it here again, you finger rubble, you know, you know. If it's still remaining, you can put here, but just one side is okay. Is that okay? You finger rub, you now put it inside the water. Is that okay? And wait to find out when will the pregnancy be okay. How do you know? How do you know when the pregnancy is okay? You get uh, a thermometer. That's the same. Now, this is just, you might not need this. Are you getting me? Because many people in the village don't use this. Do you get me? I'll mention it for people who like to use, uh, make it look complex so that your neighbor will not contempt you. Is that okay? Now, they sell this 500 naira, or this lab that they sell, uh, what's it called, glass something for school children now, 500 naira. You look at the thing there. If you look at the temperature, now the temperature is 29. Look at the figure there. If you look at the 29, inside the book, let's look at, where's the book? Single little book bring for me. Now don't worry, after this, if you're a little bit confused, my wife is always there, I'll give you a number, you call her, or call her out to probably give some small information, or everything is explained in the book in drawings. Are you getting me? We drew, I'll show you something here. Look at so much drawings. There's a video to show you what it is, and then you can see, hear me talk, and it's drawn, and it's written in words. So what more? But you know, you will still be afraid to all you take step. You must take step first. Even if you make mistake, at least you have done the first step. Then you will learn how not to make mistake again. There's nobody who started crawling and just one day just stood up and then begin to walk. What happens now? You fall once or twice and learn how not to fall again, isn't it? Okay? Now, let's go ahead. Now, when you watch, now, on this book is one secret I put there for everybody to benefit on page 14. Now, when we wanted to do this fish, we look at temperature yesterday, we put in the water, we see it was 29, no, 27. So when we check 27 on this stuff, we see, say, the egg, the pregnancy go ripe, after nine hours, nine hours, then when we fertilize finish now, the whole thing will be ready. The thing will hash in 23 hours. That means about this time tomorrow, now the thing will hash when we finish fertilizing now. So what did I do? I now decided to not to sleep till 2.30 in the morning, this morning, so that if you calculate 2.30 plus nine hours, it's about this time now, though we have already shot the time by one hour plus, but it doesn't matter, you know I'm demonstrating for you. But exactly about 11.30, the fish is ready. But mind you, if you don't have this at all, just inject, weigh the fish, just inject. What you just do is that, after about 
You do it at night, in the morning. Just carry the female fish to check whether egg they come out or not. We already see egg start coming out now, right? So if you don't have, just check. If you do it like this and egg is not coming, you know it's not ready. But once you hold it and you see egg running, bam, you quickly go and start facing your male to get the testes of the male. So I'll reduce my talking now and quickly do the practicals in your presence. You'll see it on the, on the, on the screen. Is that okay? Many fisheries professionals don't like this at all. Say, so why am I making fisheries look funny? But people are hungry. Do you need to get a certificate before you can do this? No, I want to hear you. Do you need that? So, so let's, let's go ahead. Now, where's the, where's the male fish? Let me... Just, no, leave it down. Let me hold it. Now, this is a male. Bring the basin. Now, this is a male fish. Now, how do you know it's a boy? Boys are a little bit slender. They don't have round stomach like our women. And then under the male is something that looks like a sack, like a testis. But it's not the testis. Go put it there so that, okay, you beam in it, so that it can show a male. A male has a hole for poo poo, excre excrement. And this sack that looks like a testis, but the testis is inside the fish. Now, when, now how do you know it's a matured boy? You know, there are some boys that are 14 years old, where they look big, passive, you know. <laughs> the only thing that I don't have beards. So, how do you know a boy that is less than nine months because you are matured when you are nine months? How do you know a boy that is not just a Greek? This testis, this sack will cross the fin. That shows he's matured. That shows he is matured. Is that okay? So how do you know when you go to the market to buy a fish? Even though it's very big, it might be an immature, oversized boy. You need a man, is that not? So look for a fish that that sack cross the leg. You remember me? And that cross to the right or the left, that shows a matured boy. Is that okay? So let's look at the, at the girl now, the female. The eggs are coming, right? Hold on, no, no, let me see. Now, for the, for the lady, I won't say girl because girls are immature. You can see the tummy is big. And it's like, can you see? The egg is about coming out. Oh, oh okay. Now the egg is about coming out because I injected. Now, in our own case, you see there's no sack. There are two holes. One for poo poo and one for the egg. One for, ooh, that's not fair now. But... For the sake of everybody, she has to bear the, <laughs> the wahala, you know. So what we're going to do now, now that we know she's ripe, what we now do is to now kill the male. So watch what they do while I talk. Can I be? They do it here. After all, the salmon ground was turned to a restaurant. You remember in the days of old, 5,000 people were fed with bread and fish. Is that not? So this is permitted. Is that not? Are we permitted to do it? Okay. So let me have it to you. So, are you beaming? Just be looking at it. Now, she is caught. She has to cut the head. Now, unlike Abraham, Abraham was very lucky. When he took Isaac for sacrifice, you remember an angel just stopped him and gave him, said, you can't don't sacrifice your son, I beg. Now that I know that you, you obey me now, you know, God began to make promises for him. But in the case of catfish, sorry, Isaac has to die for the sake of thousands of babies. <laughs> <Let's start. laughs> so that's what's happening now. So she's cutting to bring out the testes. Can you see the testes right in there? There are two of them. Sometimes you see some fish with just one. That's not anybody's fault. Though. You know, it's God that made them. But what's important is that when you look at the testes, the testes is whitish, like cream with milk. Inside, there are about two of them. Can you see it? You see what she did? Just kitchen knife. Madam, you don't have to go for some serious surgical uh, knife. Oh, no. Just your kitchen knife is okay. You see, nylon bag for 10 naira, isn't it? Lay there. You see tissue paper, right? Isn't it? And then you saw her use blade to cut the tummy. Is that okay? 
and bring out the testes. Are we? Okay. Okay, so he's removed the testes now. Now with the testes out, the next thing now is now, now make sure you don't touch the testes with normal water. You know, your hands are dry. Do you know why? If you touch it with water, the sperm will quickly begin to swim and then in about one minute, they don't do the assignment. And if there's no egg, that means they are wasted. So you hold on until you are brought out the egg. So the next thing now, they are going to press out the eggs of the female now. You remember I told you, for the female, we injected it around 2.30 a.m. to make up for nine hours. If I were you, you don't need to too tight for what? Just do your own around 6 p.m. No, sorry, about maybe 9.30, 10. Right? And when you wake up around 6 or 7, you can now wake up to strip. Is that okay? Now be very careful to do it on, uh, on Friday night. You know, Saturday morning, the eggs will, uh, you will fertilize. Now it will be Sunday when you are at service that the eggs will hash and you are supposed to remove unhashed eggs. So don't do it on Friday night. Make it a Thursday or a Saturday. Don't probably do it as a Christian on Friday night. Is that okay? Is somebody hearing me? No, yes. <laughs> Okay. So they are bringing out the female now for just watch the screen and then so let's hold it. Now, where's the water? Do we have water? Where's the bowl? There, bowl. Okay. Now, needed again is a bowl. This is from your kitchen now. Oh, for communion, right? But you use one in your kitchen, you know. <laughs> and then, that's what they are going to strip the eggs into. Now, before you strip the egg, there's supposed to be what you call incubator. Now, that incubator, when they show a video preview very soon now, the one you were showing initially when Pastor was talking. I will show you how to make a wooden box together with tarpaulin to make your incubator. Is that okay? And you can use a basin, the one they used to bath baby. You know, if your eggs are small, but if your eggs are big, you better make the wooden stuff. Are you getting me? Now, but for this case today, we are going to use, uh, do we have a bowl? What do we use as incubator now? Okay, we use one of these bowls. Quickly, can somebody bring us water? We just use ordinary water first. But for you, you'll be using energized water later on. Is that okay? So that you can have almost 100% arching. What kind of water did I say? Energized water. So, the water, so we'll use that one as a bowl. We don't want those fishes to die for nothing. Because we'll still end up having close to five to 8,000 babies hatched from this. So let's use that bowl. we make what they call an improvised incubator. Now, when I was in the university, you know what they call an incubator? They call it California hashing throw. Now, that California hashing throw is almost about $400 as far back as 1985. Did you hear me? Now, what does it take to get a basin or a wooden vat make carpenter make for you? You don't spend up to 3,000 naira now, isn't it? Even you can use a big basin. I have these brown ones, right? Those are the things we removed from the complexity we removed from the system. Now, you will now use what, instead of the grass, you know there's a stubborn grass that was with it. Once you start, okay, they started pressing the eggs out. Okay, can you see the eggs coming out? I can't hear somebody talk. Can we hear? Okay, good. Now, that is interesting. That is, nobody in the world of fisheries would like to do this for you without collecting 30K or 50K from you. Let's give Jesus a clap for this. I'm not saying you don't do this, oh. You charge people, oh. Did you hear what I said? You need to eat. Charge people, oh. Are you getting me, man? As a matter of fact, people, ordinary women charge people more than I do. My wife collected 30,000 from somebody yesterday, one woman. I hope she's not here. <laughs> well, she has paid, she has paid advance already. She will say, now you're get free now. <laughs> Bring my money back. But you can, you can do that. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Now, now, look at it. Can you see the eggs? Now, to think that each of these things is a baby. Look at how many. If you look at it closely, can you zoom in on it very closely? With the light. Can you see the volume of eggs? This is almost close to 
15 to 20,000. Now to think that when they arch, you are going to sell each one for 20 naira each. That young man, can you calculate for me again? <laughs> so what they will do now is to now fertilize the next stage. Now. So what was done before now is to induce the pregnancy. Now is now to now fertilize the fish. Is that okay? Now can we do something even in the church? You make a business community now, a business uh, women business center like it's done in Church of God Mission in Benin. Are you getting me? Create a forum. Begin to produce. That's where women get trained again and again. Is that okay? Put money together. Do that to, to, to the house to get it right. And then you cannot begin to move to, from your house. Then you cannot begin to move to churches. Is that okay? In this way, you can take care of Gambia. You can take care of South Africa. Man. You can take care of Cameroon. Is that okay? I almost wept some two weeks ago in a, in a mountain in Opo in Benway State. You know this program done by Evangelist Sonny. Okay, they are, they are fertilizing now. See? Immediately they put water, energized water, and then they scale it together. Mr. Now, Fish, what's going on now? Now, what's going on now? They are fertilizing the eggs. You saw how they put the testes, cut it, and they use water to mix with the eggs. Is that okay? Now they are going to spread it. They are going to spread it on Now this water is not enough, but quickly spread. Now can we have more water, please? More water. Now the only thing we did that is not all right here is that our incubator should have been as long as almost two tables. What did I say? Two tables. And then the net, you saw we were cutting the net, but we have to demonstrate for you. Is that okay? So we use this black net, you know, to create the impression, you know, water will be on, you know, water will be floating all over. Is okay, this is the net. Don't use the white net because when the baby is arch in about 20 hours or so, you know, some will not hatch, maybe about 5% or so. Now, those ones will decay and they can kill the babies that have hatched. So, if you use a white net, it will not work. Is that okay? Now, don't use the green net. And the blue net. Why? Those ones are too big. Both the the baby and the uh, what's it called? The baby and the unhashed egg will go down. So is this one? They call it aluminium net. Is that okay? Can we call that one? Okay. So this is improvised incubator. When we get back to our base, we will go and spread it. Are you getting me? We might have fifty percent survival here. Do you know why? Because we crammed all of them together which is not fair, but I think we'll be pardoned here, you know, for doing this. But I think we saw the process. How many of us understand the process? One, a whole. Can we clap for Jesus for that? Now, an incubator is something you use a wooden vat. A wooden vat. Can you play, okay, can you play that video, Mr. Fish, that TV montage? Chile. Are you getting me? So when we get to the incubator, I'll tell you to stop. That TV montage, can you play it? So when you see some green wooden vats, okay, good, keep playing. And then when we get to the wooden vat, you just pause. We'll pause. Okay, stop. Good. That's smart. Now, that's a wooden vat. Can you see play it a little bit more? Can you see play it a little bit more? Can you see? Okay. Okay, stop it again. Now, that's somebody who doesn't want to use normal wood. A carpenter will put two... 12 by 1, 12 by 1, about, uh, about 5, you know, 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, and then come to put it together. You now buy tarpaulin at uh, Coca and put it there. Make sure you wash the tarpaulin first with dry grass. You soak it with dry grass for two days so that the chemical will be off. So you remove the grass after about three, four days, and then you wash it with table salt. Don't use any chemical, just table salt for about 10 minutes, you know, like that, dry. You know, the water is not there anymore. Just wash it with double with salt. Then you now rinse it, and then you now put new water. The, the incubator is old. Your fish will be perfect when you now put the fish. Because so many people's problem is that they buy the tarpaulin, they immediately hatch the fish inside. Then the chemicals of the tarpaulin factory will now begin to kill the fish after 48 hours. And they take his one Satan that is causing that. No, it's ignorance. I hope we're clear about that. Is that okay? Now, the one you saw now is Covenant University Vats. Even at Covenant, oh, this one belongs to somebody in Port Harcourt, Shifakwana, he wanted something 
he's got some cash in his pocket. So he wants something sophisticated so that governor will come and launch the ashram. But you, the governor himself, the king of kings, will be the one to launch your own in your room. <laughs> With the wooden vats, you know. So you are on. Are you getting me? Now, if you need, so after about, now the alarm starts now. This is about 12 o'clock. Now, if you look at the, the temperature is about 29 degrees. No, 27. Water temperature. You know, you put your stuff in the water. Now, if you look at the table, you will see it will take uh, 23 hours for it to hash. 23 from this time. That means about 11 o'clock tomorrow. This will have become thousands of babies. But we're carrying it away to our place, so because Clap you, your hands. you have no <laughs> yeah. you have no big incubator. We will have tell you prepare it in advance. That was a mistake. It's okay. So that we will take it off. But don't worry. There will be well, by that by the next prosperity week, many of you will be the one doing this program. You know, to teach. Let somebody I saw somebody who say amen. I won't have to do so much talking, and somebody will give a testimonial. I sold fish like I got an order like that, uh, Mr. Adu, for. 9 million naira, 1 million fingerlings, you know, 70,000 fingerlings, and quote, so shall it be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let me say one thing. This is only popular in Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. Every other place seems to be traumatized. Do you know how much this thing is sold for 25, 30 naira? In Benue State, it's about 60. In the north, it's almost 50, in, in, in Port Harcourt, I think it's 55 naira for one. Can you imagine that? So you can enter the market, isn't it? How many of you would like to enter the market? Now do one thing for me. Put your name on a sheet of paper. Is that okay? Your name on a sheet of paper and put interested in perfecting fingerlings production. I advise you to get that book and maybe the CD to make it clear. Two people can share because we won't go around. Two people can look at, you know, go to your house together now. Instead of to pop nose or to... For, for once, read Bible finish and then look at the video together and then, you know, two people when you... You know, Jesus always sending people out two by two. Is that not? So pair up with somebody so that you can always have that synergy. So that, you know, one person will defer one mistake, Abby, but then two people will defer 10,000 mistakes. Because always share with yourself. You know, they say one will change a thousand, then two will change tens of thousands away. So your perfection gets better when you partner with somebody. Is that okay? Don't say uh, they will show me and go. No. People all have their good side and their funny side. But you look at the good side and where you are going. Is that okay? The future. Are you getting what I'm saying? So with this now, tomorrow 11 o'clock, it will be okay. So I can give a hint to some of you. And if we lose quite some, like I said, because they are too compacted, they are supposed to be spread. Are you getting me? Because the harsh ash, the ash one might affect those ones because they are compacted. But don't worry, it's okay. Now what happens next, quickly, so that I now shift on to the next ones. Now, what happens after this? How do you get it to this size in about, uh, in about six to eight weeks? How do you get it to this size in about eight weeks? Now, you have to not take care of babies now. And women are specialists in this one. But men, you know, men too, they don't, we all need cash too, isn't it? <laughs> I know the men are not slow. Now, this is about taking care of baby fish now. Now, how do you go about it? Now, human females, they have breasts to breastfeed their babies. Is that not? That's when you give back to ones, twins. When they are triplets, there's a problem. No be so. Now this one, there are about 10,000 babies. How would the mother fish breastfeed them? Now God is awesome. God gave all of the baby fish, when they come out alive, they all come out with breasts. That breast will last them, the milk in that breast will last them for three days. So that time, you will not roam about to look for food to give them. Is that not? <laughs> so, no. They will, they will be absorbing the, uh, the, the yolk. Can you give me the fingerling book? Give me the fingerling book. I'll show you an illustration of what it looks like. Now, it's like a, a globe, a bulb under the belly. Then it will be like that. Then after about three days, you will see that that thing will disappear. That's what they will be eating for the next three days. Don't feed them all, because if you feed them, you are going to kill them because you pollute your water. They won't eat. They are just breastfeeding exclusively. Oh, so where is the fingerling book? So for three days, fingerling book, okay? Okay, the page that has... Now, all these things we did, I hope we saw it in the illustration. They are there in the illustration. 
Is that and that's the book in case so that you can know you can know how to get the how to get the book. Now now this is what happens. The egg. Now the next phase now. Okay, you want to show somebody? Now that is the baby with the with the with the breast. Right? Now, after the third day, what do you give them to eat? That's the next thing now. Now there's something they call brine shrimp. Now, some of them take egg yolk. You mix, you boil egg, you know, hard boiled egg, right? Then you bring out, then you bring out the albumen. Are you getting me? You eat the albumen, or do you throw it away? You know the white part of the egg, where you don't boil and finish. You eat that part. And then the yolk is what you now put in an handkerchief. You now squeeze it inside a bucket of water. Then use it to wet your, your incubator now. After about two minutes, you will see them, their head will look black. Their tummy will be white. Their tail will be black. So you have black, white, black. After about four hours, if you look at the fish, you will see black, black, black. So what does that tell you? You take the same water again. You just take, you know, like that. After about a minute or two, if you look at the fish, you see that they are black, white, black. After about two, three, about four hours, you see black, black, black again. Isn't it? Now you do that. Now all of the process is written. All of the process is written here from what you do from day one to the 38th day when the fish should be ready for, are you getting me? Don't let me waste time on that feeding. Now the food are very simple, available, are you getting me? In most of these shops now. When we started this thing, my shop was the only shop in Nigeria from 1997 to almost 2001. Then other people came to copy what we sell. And now you have so many shops all over selling fish feeds. All these poultry people, they sell the same thing too. Is that okay? So how do you sell the fish? Now, when you want to sell, once the fish is becoming four weeks old, are you getting me? So many people are going to do the growing the fish from finger to other side. You tell church members, make a small flyer or by word of mouth. Is that okay? Word of mouth. If you have about three or four daughters and then you keep them in the room nonstop, will you see anybody talk to them about marriage? No, I, don't, I can't hear anybody. I'm a typical example of that because my mom is very, very closed in person. Our school is opposite our house. So when my dad is a census man, 1963, so he came to count in that house. So when they have left, somebody told them there's a fine girl in that house that you have not counted. Go back. So my dad went to threaten the man. That's my mom's father now. See, there's a girl here. They said there's a girl. Bring her out for counting. So they brought the fine girl. The census man looked at the girl and said, mm. came back to count again and again and again. Before you know it, I was born in 1964. My mom told me the story. Now you can imagine if that census man did not go and do census in that house. My mom thought she wanted to be a Catholic nun. She wouldn't marry at all. Thank God she married. Thank God Mr. Fish was produced. <laughs> <laughs> so you must advertise. I'm saying this you know, on the funny part. You know, so that you will have to do a little bit of advertisement by a small flyer, get fish. Nobody advertised in a newspaper for one day. This 6,000 naira advert, you will be overloaded. So be careful. Don't make mouth when you don't have fish. Now, there are so many people, let me know too. Because we take fish from people and resell to people. Is that okay? Is that okay? And then from this church, we can spread to other churches to do this kind of program. You know, everybody now buys fish from you. Is that not? Is that not? Okay? So this is fingerless production, one of the top most secrets in fish farming that is placed on your lap for free. Give Jesus a clap offering. Now, we move on to the next. We move on to the next program. Now, you see, there are two books. There are two books to bring you. Now, the next one is, how do you grow the fish from the fingerling size? If somebody buys from you, that's what so many people do all over Lagos, all over Abuja, right in their backyard. How do you grow the fish from this size? From this size to that size, you know, something bigger than that size, in four to five months, putting about a hundred. Let me start from hundred. Let me not harass you with two hundred. So, I think it's better than two per square meter. 
putting a hundred fish per square meter. Can you play that grading CD? Time to play grading CD. Now, like I told you, if you look at this book, now this small book explains all that I know it's not enough. That when we're in school, everybody was doing fish farming in a primitive way. Now ask me, why is it possible now for you to make about one million naira in your room raising fish to adult size? Do you know that's what you get? If you, now this is a typical, now I'll tell you why is it possible. Before, instead of one million, you only make just about 25,000 naira. Now you can make a million. So what makes you to make almost a million naira in a room size space? When I say room size, I'm talking about three steps. One, two, three. By three. One, two, three. You know that's a standard room now. About 10 square meters. You know what I mean now. Those of us where they say face me, I face you. Every room is about the same size, isn't it? 